Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Western Adventure, we head out to Wyoming for an episode of Fort Laramie starring Raymond Burr. Yes, that Raymond Burr, the one from Perry Mason fame. In fact, uh, uh, Burr said himself he would love to have continued doing Fort Laramie. The problem was Perry Mason ate every minute of his day and of his week so that he couldn't do the radio show. So let's hear an episode of Fort Laramie from uh, February 5th, 1956. This episode entitled Squaw Man. At the gallop! Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Looks like they're about ready to pull out, Captain. Yeah. Walk back with me, Sergeant. I never did see such a mangy collection of stock. It's not a cavalry outfit, Gorse. It sure ain't. Most of these wagon trains heading west get through one way or another, but I sure don't know how. I talked with Mr. Brown a couple of times. He seems like a good man. He is. But I wonder how much luck a Missouri farmer is going to have taking a couple of hundred women and children through Indian country. He'll make out, Captain. I hope so. Hello, Sergeant Gorse. I beg your pardon, miss? I was afraid we'd leave without seeing you again. Oh, well, I... I... And I wanted to thank you for last night. Yeah, sure, miss. Goodbye, Sergeant. And thank you. Still water runs deep, Gorse. How's that, Captain? Yeah, never mind. All I did was give her a little old knife. I, I bought it at the Sutler's. Never mind, never mind, It's all Sergeant. it was, Captain. I, I just give her a little old present. Sure, Sergeant. Come on, get in there. Keep them wagons in line, two abreast, till we hit the river. You're late getting started, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Captain Quince. Oh, only about an hour. You're wasting daylight. Yeah, we're pulling out now, Captain. Any of your men going to ride along with us? No, but you won't have any trouble. Like they say, Captain, Oregon or bust. You guarantee no trouble, Captain? Out here, we don't guarantee anything, Mr. Brown. But you should at least get through to Salt Lake without trouble. Yeah, I hope you're right. It's mighty lonely out there once you're out of sight of the fort. Yeah, I know. Well, thank the Major for his hospitality, will you? No thanks necessary. Well, good luck. Thanks. See you in Oregon sometime, Captain. All right. Great job. Gorse, what are you staring at? Oh, nothing, Captain. Just a train heading out. You've seen a few hundred of them before, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Hmm. What's her name? Who? The girl. Emily. 
Emily McCutcheon. Going to Oregon with her pa. She was put up real good. <laughs> You're all cavalry, Gorse. Yes, sir. Long way to Oregon. I hope they make it. So do I. Yeah, come on. I missed coffee this morning. Let's find some. There's a rider coming in. Yeah. Looks like a white man, dressed in buckskin. Hunter, maybe. It's Will Granby. He's a squaw man, ain't he? Yeah, lives with the Arapaho. Captain? How are you, old horse? Hmm, tolerable. Well, it's good to see you. You haven't been in in two or three years. Nope. You come for supplies? Come to parley. Got a proposition. Huh? All right, come on in, Will. Mm, Oblige. Uh, Sergeant Gorse, will you have Mr. Granby's horse stabled? Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Sit down, Will. Mm, Oblige. All right, now what is it? What's your proposition? I figured maybe to hire out to you. You want a job? Cavalry always needs scouts. Maybe. <laughs> you saying you want the job? Why not? I know this country better than the hairs of my head. Better than any man except old Gabe Bridger. There's some few places I've been even Gabe ain't. You're a mountain man, Will. You lived wild and free all your life. Why do you want to tie yourself down now? Yeah. It ain't like the old times no more, Captain. It ain't pleasurable now. It's hard. Maybe it's the doing you cavalry fellers. Or maybe it's our own fault. Maybe we trapped too much. Took too much buffalo. I don't know. But uh, I got to be a young squaw. Prettiest you ever seen. I figured if I was to work, her and me'd eat regular at least. Right now we have peace. We don't need any more scouts. I figure you do, Captain. Tell me, Will. Am I hired? I haven't got the authority to hire you. That'll have to come from the Major. No, I'd rather deal with you. I know you. I can't hire you, but if you've got information, I'll make you a promise. At least I'll feed you and send you back with meat. Yeah, meat I could carry wouldn't last long. Then we'll go see the Major. Now, wait. I'd rather tell you, but uh, you got to promise me one thing. What's that? That it'll be settled peaceful. They're my people. Well, uh, I'll do all I can. All right. There's going to be trouble. Tribes are getting restless, all of them. The Arapaho, even. The government promised them if they'd go to the agencies, they'd get food, meat. And that promise ain't been kept. Yeah, I know. A supply train comes through now and then, but it's not enough, I know that. The Arapaho are starving, Captain. Eating bark and roots. Game on agencies played out. If they can't get food from the government or from the land, then they got to go looking for it wherever they can. They got to eat. Will, have they left the agency? They're camped at Silver Spring. That's on the Oregon Trail. They got to eat, Captain. They went looking for buffalo, but there ain't no buffalo. So they'll get food where they can from the wagon trains. Well, we got to talk to the Major. You promised. I said I'd do all I could, and I will. There's not much time for talking. There's a wagon train headed for Silver Springs right now. Yeah, I know. I saw it. All right, come on. We'll see the Major. And while they see the Major, we'll take a break. February 5th, 1956, Fort Laramie on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Classic Radio Theater family, you know our friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of your life. He didn't stop by just creating the best pillow. He created the best bed sheets ever. They look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep for me because, you know, I'm working like 67 hours a day. Now, Mike's offering the best deal on this Giza Dreams bed sheets ever. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. You'll never want to sleep on anything else once you sleep 
slept on a set of Giza Dream sheets. A special offer for you right now. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. Call 1-800-928-4715. Use the promo code WYATT. Or go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Wyatt. It's good on anything on the website. That number again, 1-800-928-4715. Use my promo code Wyatt. Thanks for spending part of your day with us here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now more of Fort Laramie starring Raymond Burr from February 5th, 1956. How do we know this man's telling the truth? I've known him for a long time, Major. He doesn't lie. Could be a trap. If it is a trap, then there's trouble for sure. I don't trust a man lives with Indians, marries them. No, no, look here. You Major, tell... there's a wagon train on the trail to Silver Springs right now. They've got to be warned. I can still ride out with a detachment to turn them back. Captain Quince, our orders are to keep the trail open to Oregon and to keep the Indians on the agencies. If anything, we'll send a company to escort the train through and run those Arapaho back where they belong. Couldn't do that without fighting, Major. That's one of the functions of the cavalry. In this case, there's no cause for it. The Arapaho have broken their treaty, Captain. The way they see it, we're the ones who broke the treaty by not keeping our promise about food. All I know is they're off the agency and they'll have to go back. If we go out in force, there's bound to be trouble. If I take a small detachment, maybe I can talk to him. This is a hostile action, Captain. It's got to be met as such. Major, the Arapaho are starving. they got to eat. <laughs> Mr. Granby, I'm sorry that they're starving, but I can't do anything about it. At least not until the supplies come through to me. My orders are to keep the Arapaho on the agency, and I can do something about that. Those are people out there, Major, and they're hungry. They only want food. Captain Quince, you'll take Company B and escort the wagon train until you meet the Arapaho. You'll send the wagon train on and escort the Indians to the agency and use whatever measures are necessary. That's all, Captain. Yes, sir. One thing, sir. What is it? Have I your permission to hire Will Granby as a scout? I don't see why it's necessary, but if you want him, take him. Thank you, sir. What kind of a man is that? Oh, he's all right, Will. He's an officer. He's got his orders. He goes by the book. He understands the situation all right, but he can't admit it. Listen, can you be ready to move out in an hour? I can't ride with you, Captain. They're my people. Will, I said I'd do what I could. I need your help. Ride with me. You know what you're asking? You know what it might mean for me if there's trouble? There won't be trouble if I can prevent it. I'm afraid you can't, Captain. But I'll go with you. We should see him just over this hill, Captain. Yeah, if the Arapaho didn't see him first. You figure they'd attack? I don't know, Sergeant. But I'll feel easier when we spot that wagon train. I was right, Captain. There they are. All right, Sergeant. Let's ride out. Company! At the gallop! At the gallop! Ho! They've seen us. They're pulling up. Sergeant, blind men would have known we were here. What's the matter, Captain? I want you to stop here, Mr. Brown, for the night. Oh, why? We figured to camp at Silver Springs. Just over the pass there, not more than two or three miles. We can make it easy before dark. This will make an all right camp. There's water and wood. If there's trouble, Captain, I want to know. It may be nothing, Mr. Brown, but I want to find out. You to camp here and stay here till I give you the word to go on. It's Indians, ain't it? There is trouble. Maybe. Maybe not. 
But there's no use worrying all your folks. You'll be safe here. I'm leaving most of my men to guard you. Well, why can't you escort us over the pass to Silver Spring? Because if there were to be trouble, it would happen there in the pass. With the wagon trains all strung out and hard to defend. <sighs> all right, Captain. Whatever you say. I'll come back or send word back to Lieutenant Seibert as soon as I know it's safe for you to cross. Sergeant Gorse! Yes, sir? You and two men will accompany Mr. Granby and myself. Pick them and fall out. Mr. Brown, Lieutenant Seibert is in charge here till I get back. I don't see a doggone thing, Captain. Now keep a sharp eye. Move the troopers further out the flank. Yes, sir. Jenkins, I'll off your right, Nick. You need to hear somewhere I can feel it. Yeah, they must have seen the train, Will. Yeah, they have, but they also saw the soldiers. They might be making tracks already. They disappear pretty fast. I don't think they've had that much time. They'll probably stand for a fight. And, Captain, what are you going to do? Will... A few miles back, did you, uh, did you notice anything? On the trail? Sure, buffalo sign. Right. It's the first I've seen this close to Laramie in a year. Mm-hmm. Big herd, too. Across the trail going south. It'd make a lot of Arapaho meat. Yeah, it might work. Worth a try. Wait. You see anything, Will? Yeah. One of the scouts. Leave it to me. And you need a... Never seen it now. I need it now. No, no, no. Well, all right. He'll take us in. first Indian village I've ever been in that wasn't full of barking dogs. They had to eat them. You notice how it is, Captain? Yeah, I see. I'd say they're not very happy to see us. No. I'm, I'm sorry, Will, to turn them against you. Uh, can't be helped. Yeah, this is it. Hi, Daddy too. Why do you bring white soldiers to fight your people? They don't come to fight, Gray Feather. This Captain Quint, he comes as a friend. White soldier is not a friend of our Arapaho. White soldiers break promise. They do not give meat. I think I can get you meat, Gray Feather. I think I can take your hunters to Buffalo, a big herd. You think? You do not know. Our Arapaho have ride from agency in north, hunt buffalo all through Wide Valley, nor Buffalo. Gray Feather. On my way here from Fort Laramie, I saw much buffalo sign. You hunted only the north side of the river. You haven't been south of the Platte. I have. There are buffalo there. To hunt take many days. Wagon train is here now. If you attack that wagon train, it'll mean much fighting. Many dead among the Arapaho. Great mourning among the Arapaho. There will be mourning for the white soldiers, too. The army will keep on sending soldiers, rifles, until the Arapaho is no more. You know I speak the truth. My people are hungry. Then ride back towards the fort with me. I'll show you buffalo sign, then you can track from there. Take many days. It's the only way you can be sure to find buffalo and food. If you find buffalo in two days, Prey Feather does not attack wagon train. Two days isn't very long. Two days. If we do find Buffalo, I want your promise to go peacefully back to the agency. If you find. All right, your hunters will come with me. But meantime, you must let the wagon train go through in peace. This one. Maybe not next one. It is agreed then, Greyfeather. I not. Captain, two days ain't very long. We gotta be awful lucky. We don't have much choice. You know what'll happen if we don't find buffalo? Yeah. There'll be just the five of us out there with Gray Feathers hunters. Like I say, we don't have much choice. We gotta guess where the buffalo will be. We don't have time to backtrack them. 
Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. I'm sending you back to the wagon train with a message for Mr. Seibertz. Uh, Private Jenkins' horse is fresher, Captain. And I ain't been on no buffalo hunt in a long time. All right, Sergeant. Jenkins! Jenkins, you'll go back to the wagon train, tell Mr. Seibertz to escort the train past Silver Springs, then return here in bivouac. If I should not return, he's to get clear if he can and report to the fort for reinforcements. Move out. Well, we got 48 hours, Will. Let's find those buffalo. See anything, Will? Nothing, Captain. Not on that side. Nothing this way, either. You can see a long way. I don't like the look of them back there. Gray feather getting anxious. I know. I, I just don't understand it, Will. It's not a sign. I've been thinking, Captain, we're too far south. The buffalo were headed south. Well, maybe not as fast and as far as we thought. Maybe they veered east. No, I've been thinking... It's been hot and dry for these last few days, and no wind. Buffalo don't travel much in the heat. They just stand and graze and suffer with thirst. But there's wind now. Well, some from the southwest. But if there's up north of here, it'd bring them the smell of water from the Laramie River. Yeah. The radio show that Perry Mason killed. Fort Laramie, February 5th, 1956, rang the verse that he kept wanting to do the show, but he had no time because of Perry Mason. Uh, you're listening to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox at Conclusion of Port Laramie. Follow these messages. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of Port Laramie, starring Raymond Burr. February 5th, 1956. Yeah, the river's still high. Yeah, and they'd probably be craving for water about now, and they'd stick their noses into the wind and make a run for it, like they do. You might be right, Will. So if we cut back northeast to the Laramie, we'll find them. They might be there. There's only one trouble. What? Look who's coming. Uh huh. Captain, it is as Grey Feather spoke. You promised buffalo two days. Now two days are gone. There is no buffalo. Your promise is like all promises of white soldier. We've been looking a long time, Grey Feather, but now we know where the buffalo are. Captain, give much talk. We want buffalo, not talk. Grey Feather, my soldiers are at Silver Springs. If we do not return there, it will mean war for the Arapaho. Maybe you return. But he not. It is not yet evening of the second day. There is little time. Maybe, but enough. We're going to the waters of the Laramie and find your buffalo. On this next rise, we ought to be able to see. That's right, Will. What if they ain't there, Captain? Well, if not, maybe we can get to the river, find some cover. So stay close, watch for my signal. Yes, sir. You, uh, you should have gone back to that wagon train, Sergeant. I guess I ain't much of a garrison soldier. All right, look sharp. Captain, they ain't at the river. There's nothing. Wait, look there. Coming over the hills beyond, running for the river. Look at them. Thousands of them. Noses in the wind and running belly bent for breakfast. There go your buffalo, Grey Feather, all you can eat. Well, go on. Get them. Eagle! Oh, Sure was mighty hungry, Captain. Yeah. Well, I guess our luck held. 
Yes, it did. Well, let's let's ride on down to the river. <laughs> I could do with a drink. Miss the company. Yes, sir. Company, prepare to dismount. Yes. Well, you're back. Yes, sir. Did you have any trouble? No, sir. No casualties. Either side. You took long enough. The Oregon Trail's still open, Major. The Arapaho are back on the agency. What took the time? Why, uh... Why, we... We found some buffalo. Stopped to hunt. The Indians took enough meat back to the agency to keep them quiet all summer. I see. Well, that... That was fortunate. It was, uh... Mostly Will Granby's doing. He found the buffalo. Oh, well... Maybe I was wrong about him, Lee. Maybe he can be useful to us. I think he can. I uh, brought him back with us. His wife, too. You, uh... You like to meet her? An Arapaho? She's sure not St. Louis. <laughs> sure, all right, Captain. Granby? Howdy, Major. This is Will's wife, Major. Lark woman. How do you do? Yeah, lawyer. Uh, Mr. Granby. Yes, sir? If she's to stay around the post, she'll, uh, she'll have to wear something more than that. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah she's got a shirt somewhere in the baggage. She, Arapaho women aren't like Cheyenne or the Sioux or Crow. They don't wear much except when it's right cold. There are a lot of men on the post, Will. Huh? Oh, yes, sir, Captain. I'll, I'll see to it. Oh, and Mr. Granby. Yes, sir. My compliments on your work with Captain Quince. As of now, you may consider yourself on the Army payroll as scout. It'll be in tomorrow's special order. Yes, sir. The quartermaster will house you. Oblige, Major. Come on, child. Oh, she's, uh... She's kind of pretty, isn't she, Lee? Yeah. They make, uh... Pretty good wives, too. Clean, quiet, hardworking. Nice people. Now, you wouldn't be trying to soften me up, would you, Lee? Win me over to your way of thinking? I figure a man's got to make up his own mind about things, Major. Captain Quince. Yes, sir? Don't get too smart. Just be thankful I don't ask how you happen to run into Buffalo and turn a serious police duty into a pleasure trip. Hunting. My striker's cooking up some buffalo steaks, Major Daggett. You, uh, like to come over to my quarters and try some? <laughs> sure, let's go, Lee. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norma MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Ralph Moody, Edgar Barrier, Frank Cady, and Eleanor Tannen. Company, tension! Dismiss!
Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. February 5th, 1956, Fort Laramie on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, an episode of the Wacky Zany Bob and Ray Show. This was originally broadcast on February 5th, 1960. Now then, Bob Elliott and Ray Golding present the CBS Radio Network. leader had a tough time getting the music off the ground today. What happened to him, anyway? He uh, hasn't been up to snuff the last few days. Smell, did your supply of snuff come in? Or did you, you didn't mean that? No, I didn't mean that. Yeah, He's well, well supplied with that. But uh, his music, his downbeats have been a little bit delayed mm-hmm. somehow. Well, uh, this well, is another week. And uh, we were playing in the snow most oh, all day. I have a phone here. Lady listens to us up in Gilman, Wisconsin, Route 1. I know the place. And her name is, uh, can you make that out? Is that Mrs. Leala? What is it? I know I can. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wish I could, but it goes, it was sent to the uh, folks there at WCCO in Minneapolis. Yeah. It says, who makes with the noise that drives gloom away, the nonsense that lightens the end of day, that brings a smile to tired lips and fills the ears with jolly quips? Those zany guys <laughs> on CCO, meaning WCCO, the ones who make the tiredness go. Yes, I can tell you just any day, those wonderful guys. Hey, Bob and Andy. Huh? I have a letter here from a lady Bob and Ray, yes. in California who says, how can you day after day dare to put on two guys? Well, don't read those. Oh, I shouldn't have read, read the nice ones that I uh, okay. that read. <laughs> I thought we might as well give both sides a chance. Well, you have something very nice to say. I want to thank uh, very sincerely the uh, nation's radio editors for the award that uh, we were given by TV and Radio Daily last week, a week ago today, and uh, I want to thank them very, very much for it as the best comedy sh- radio show of the year. Show. See, that was really our kind of, but that was that was a record. Now let's ask the audience what you think of uh, the critics' award giving Bob and Ray the best uh, radio comedy show award. What do you think of it, audience? <laughs> then we ought to thank Newsweek magazine for the picture and the little story this week. And I think yeah, that would take care of most of the thanks. Huh? I guess so. For now, should we have a commercial or go right and do? I think he's right. he wants right. to leave early. So All right, I'll come in here. I'm traveling science correspondent. The good Spencer Marco has some news for us from the Civilian Space Agency Space House, located in Leesville, Virginia. Come in here, please. Spencer Marco. Alongside me is Grover Galt, director of the Civilian Agency Space House, and the noises you hear in the background are the sounds of the future. Right, Mr. Galt? Well, not exactly, Mr. Markle. Well, you told me before we went on the air that... Well, I frequently change my mind after a failure or two around here. Uh, At any rate, sir, the project that's being worked on now is called Operation Split Trip. Uh, That's uh, at least correct. Uh, That is uh, right. Now, uh, we're busy assembling a space platform here in the space house. Is that the platform over there, Mr. Galt? No, that's the floor of the space house. I see. Now, what's the idea behind Operation Spilt Milk, Mr. Galt? We started Operation uh, Split Trip several weeks ago uh, when the telescope boys discovered uh, that there might be an atmosphere on the planet Venus after all. Yes, I read about it. Well, after a lot of checking around, uh, we also discovered that Venus is quite a distance away from the planet Earth, uh, don't you see? <laughs> Plenty fine. Yes. Well, now the idea of Operation Split Trip is to set up a space platform about halfway between the planet Earth, on which you find yourself standing, Mr. Markle, yes. and the planet Venus, so the uh, tired astronaut can stop and take a ride. Uh, somewhat the same idea as our own roadside inn. What? I mean, stopping off to eat on a long trip, it's the same thing, isn't it? Well, yes, but this is infinitely more scientific. She is roadside in. Uh, 
quite a bit different. Well, if it wasn't more scientific, yeah. I suppose you could shoot a roadside in right into space, and that would be that. Well, we could, yeah. And a roadside in would burn from the friction of it all, anyway. That's correct. So we have to build something that would be on the order of a roadside in. And yet aerodynamically suited to the job. Well, I think it's a good idea, Mr. Gall. I get tired and hungry on a long trip, and I always look forward to stopping off to eat and rest a little before I go on. Well, now, uh, now there's the first side of the space platform being put up over there now, Mr. Markle. Where? Over at the south end of the space house. Oh, I see. That's very good, Mr. Gall. You've got the neon sign installed already. Very impressive name, too. Halfway House. Mm. I'll tell my friends about it. Thank you, Mr. Markle. And thank you, Mr. Galt. What I've seen here today is perhaps the start of something very absorbing, something we'll all be talking about for some time to come. Thank you for letting us come into your space house. And now back to our studio. And now it's time for the Green Pickerel. The story of Paul Chevalier, a 17th century hero. As usual, France was in a state of upheaval when Chevalier, fop, charlatan, or whatever he was, heeded the call of his people. Chevalier, I beg of you, do not make this journey. It is a fool's errand. Freedom, Raoul Martignac, is not to be held so lightly that it should not weigh heavily on one's mind. No, Raoul Martignac, I must go to the tavern of the two intertwining roads to see what I can learn. The tavern is filled with the minister's secret police. No place for the green pickerel. It will mean your neck. You're caught, Paul. The guillotine holds no fears for me, Raoul Martignac. It has already been used on me several times. I must go now. Goodbye, Raoul Martignac. Good fortune, Mr. Poole. Monsieur, you do not drink your wine. A slight indisposition, perhaps? So what name do you go by, girl of the bar? <laughs> I am the famous Marie. Everyone knows me. I will sit in your lap, no? Mary, a lovely name. And your face, it is the face of justice. Am I not correct in this, Marie? I do not understand, sir. You speak in riddles. And it is dangerous to speak in riddles in a tavern filled with the minister's secret police, no? Sir, I have much to do. A moment, Mary. You say you have much to do. I must ask you, the much you have to do, is it in the name of the people? I cannot say, sir. I, I do not even know who you are. It is dangerous to speak with strangers. Ah, I am no stranger, Mary. Who are you, monsieur? You have but to feel the collar of my shirt to know who I am. Why, it's a silken shirt. Then you must be... Quiet, Mary. We have an enemies here. Yes, I am. Paul Chevalier, the green pickerel, at your service. I need information, Mary. Do we understand one another? Perfectly, monsieur. Attention! Attention, Minister Secret Police! This fop seated here is none other than Paul Chevalier, the green pickerel. Chevalier! Attempt to complete a 
Florence, at your studio alarm. I quite calm down. Florence, I have restrained an angry membership. I have a pleasure to pause, sir. No, you're getting a blurred. Word, it's getting blurred now. We can't understand it. Little's a little well, smaller. The point is that... The point is you're angry and they are too, huh? I have the charge of West Fitchburg. And he's pretty upset at the way of restraining me. And I, Why? I would like once... This week, sir, it's too late now, maybe next week, to sit down at the huge studio organ and play Philippeur. Not to play jealousy, I know. They know what I'm saying, White Brown. Well, uh, it's just been unfortunate you never completed the selection. We do have about 30 seconds now, if you could play it fast. I have played in 30 right. seconds. It'll be the same thing again, just okay. the introduction. Well, maybe you'll we'll, we'll try to work it in on Monday and uh, you play the whole thing. Will that make you feel happy with this? Just remember, there are 12,000 people who will march on this studio. I only see just one name. Just remember that and don't forget it if you're smart. No, well, no, I'm not a leader. That sounds very much like a threat, but uh, we won't take it that way. Whatever you know want. Going back to the going back to the hotel now. That's right, yes. Okay. Well, have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Come in a little bit more calm on Monday. Will you? Okay, Bob. Okay. And speaking of Monday, that's uh, when we'll be back next. But we'll be back with a weekend suggestion in just ten seconds. Won't you think of us this weekend? And join us on Monday again. Until then, this is Ray Golding reminding you to write and get work. Bob Elliott reminding you to hang by your thumb. Bob and Ray, can you believe that kind of zaniness went on on the CBS radio network every night of the week for 15 minutes? Crazy stuff. Uh, Bob and Ray uh, from February 5th. 5th, 1960, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thanks for making us part of your day. Uh, would you do me a favor? Thank this station. Support their advertisers. It's their kindness and courtesy. It allows us to be with you each and every day. Also, visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. There you can stream our shows on demand. You can learn more about classic radio collecting. You can follow us on social media through that page. And you can write me directly, classicradio.stream. Dot stream. Uh, don't forget that our shows are out there. If you miss a day, you don't have to miss a show. iHeart, Spotify, Spreaker, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's where you'll find me. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.